It's it's called the quadrilateral. Um, there we go. That's all you gotta do. Okay. I'm gonna come around. I said I'm gonna come around. I gotta go and give you the new stuff. I gotta go and give you the new stuff, and then I'll come back around Asia as you guys are doing work on this new stuff. All right. So the new stuff that I want to go over, guys, is with a rhombus. Now, remember. Remember, with a rhombus, we talked about as the parent of quadrilaterals, that a rhombus is a parallelogram. Okay? So if we have a parallelogram, everything that we wrote for parallelograms two class periods ago, we know is also same true. So I'm going to go ahead and list them again to make sure we internalize this information and do not forget it. Because if we know something is a parallelogram or it falls under the family of parallelograms, that these are absolute truths. And these absolute truths are, parallelogram has two pairs of opposite congruent and parallel sides. Okay. Two pairs of opposite congruent and parallel sides, right? We also know that it has two pairs of opposite congruent angles. That means the angles that are across from each other are congruent, OK? Um, we also know that the. Um, we could also say that consecutive angles are supplementary. Now remember when we talked about supplementary angles with rectangles, supplementary remember means that consecutive angles. So let's look at this again. If you have a rhombus, opposite angles are equal in measure, right? Consecutive angles, let's say this is angle 1, that's angle 2. Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. All right, so remember, that's what supplementary means. Okay. And this one, if that's 3, then we could say measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 3. Right? Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. That's true for all parallelograms. And since a rhombus is in the family of parallelograms, it's true for that as well. This is nothing new. This is everything. I have wrote this exact same thing for parallelograms. And I've wrote this exact same thing for rectangles. All right? Um, so that's what we have there. Now, um, what else did we have? So that's pretty much what, oh, we also talked about the diagonals bisect each other, right? OK, so we know the diagonals bisect each other. That's from parallelograms. These are all things that we know from parallelograms. You guys are writing down the exact same notes you already wrote down. We're writing them down one more time again. And I'm telling you to write them down because you have to know these characteristics to solve any problems, Zeth, um, for Ms. Magloth. You have to know these properties. Now let's talk about a rhombus. All right? What makes a rhombus different? Why is Mario different than Camillo? Right? What separates them? I'm hotter. I'm stronger, faster. Okay. See, there you go. So how does the rhombus differentiate from its parallelogram? It's actually more of a kind of a father-son relationship rather than actually a friend relationship. But anyways, um, there's a couple things. Now remember in a rectangle, guys, do you remember how we said that the diagonals were equal in measurement? Right? Yes? A rhombus, that's not always the case. That's only true for your rectangles. Um, for a rhombus, though, there is something that's special. For a rhombus, the diagonals um, for the diagonals um, are perpendicular. So the diagonals are perpendicular. So what does that mean again? That means they create a 90 degree angle. 
So if I was going to go ahead and say, hey, here's your, not, here's your two diagonals. They're not equal in measurement like a rectangle. Okay? They're not equal in measurement like a rectangle. But what they do do is create a 90 degree angle. They're perpendicular. Perpendicular, sorry. And also, the diagonals bisect every angle. Remember we talked about angle bisectors? That was so huge in writing proofs. If you have a line that bisects an angle, that means it cuts the angle in half. So guess what? Now, those two are equal to each other. So do you think that might be important for solving for x, Alexandra? Did you lose your pencil again? Oh, OK. I, just, I thought you might have lost your pencil. All right, another thing that's also pr true for um, rhombuses, which I'll just get into the last one, is you know, also they have um, four congruent sides. All those sides are equal to measurement. So if I know the measurement of one side, I know the measurement of all the sides. That's true for rhombuses. That's not true for parallelograms. OK, Zach? So does anybody have any questions? Really, guys, this is the new stuff. Everything, all this you guys have already written down, and we're writing it down again. Okay? This, 5, 6, and 7, is where we're gonna, um, is the new stuff that you guys are going to need to use. Okay? And that's it. So you guys have a half an hour left in class.